On Long Island, there is a mansion unlike any other. With over 25,000 square feet, stables, and formal gardens, it's fair to say that Career and Hastings outdid themselves. Hi everyone, Ken here. Hit that subscribe button and let's explore this house. Herman B. Dorier was a man who thrived on the thrill of the racetrack and the pursuit of excellence. Born in 1862, he built his name as a leading thoroughbred owner in the United States, but when anti-gambling laws shuttered racetracks in New York, he refused to accept defeat. Instead, he boldly relocated to France where he established Haras de Gazon in Normandy and began an extraordinary second act. In France, Dorier's horses achieved greatness. Sweeper claimed the English 2,000 guineas in 1912, but it was Durbar who delivered Dorier's crowning moment at the 1914 Epsom Derby. Despite controversies over the Colts' pedigree, Durbar surged ahead of 30 rivals to win by three lengths, stunning the crowd and proving that Dorier's instincts were unmatched. His foresights extended beyond the track. Dorier purchased the Mare Frisette, whose bloodline produced racing legends like Seattle Slough and Mr. Prospector. But this wasn't where his legacy ended. He had been born into a wealthy family, which had allowed him to chase his dreams, and with means, he hired esteemed architects Carrer and Hastings to design for him an equestrian estate in New York's Old Westbury. Completed in 1903, the 25,000 square foot home was simply named Knoll for its unusual topography of small, rolling hills. The house itself was constructed of concrete, with marble dust mixed into it to give it a creamy, glittering appearance. In a way that only Career and Hastings could, the duo blended Italian Renaissance motifs with the Beaux-Arts to create a distinctly American manner. The grounds were planned to conform to the natural landscape, with long walks planned between the gentle hills. In their contours, sunken gardens were planned with long reflecting pools lined by colorful flowers. The estate was meant to balance the casual with the formal, including a reflecting pool which could double as a swimming pool. Secluded away on the 100-acre grounds, the stables were designed to be reminiscent of the legacy estates found in the area, a mansion of sorts for his prized horses. We could spend all day wondering about the gardens and horse paths, but I think it's about time we head inside. We'll take a quick look at the floor plan to note that we actually enter at the garden level, which is below the first floor. This leads us into the Kenstone-clad entrance hall, where we'll make our way up a few partial flights of stairs to reach the first floor. Once again, we can orient ourselves by referring to the floor plans and note that we are taking one of the mirrored staircases up to the rotunda just below the long gallery. After stepping up from one of the smaller archways, we are greeted by a multi-story rotunda, filled with light and pierced by the grand staircase which is centered on a marble fireplace at its landing. Once again, in the old traditions followed by the architects, mirrors are strategically placed in intervals to catch sunlight and set it all about the rotunda at each level, almost blindingly so. Next, we'll make our way over to the dining room, which is finished out with walnut paneling and a fireplace sans mantle. In the drawing room, in the opposite wing, the paneling is painted in a shade of pearl and the fireplace is inlaid with yellow marble. We can imagine this ensemble with crimson curtains, the height of fashion at the time. Both the dining room and the living room open out into mirrored loggias surrounding the courtyard. Back inside, we'll head over to the den, painted in a dark green with a green marble fireplace. Each bedroom evokes a different style, though perhaps the most luxurious suite was that of Mrs. Dorier, which includes a large sitting room, boudoir, dressing room, and a private bathroom. Noel was enjoyed by the Dorier family for many years before it was sold to Bradley Martin and Helen Phipps, and it remained in their hands for the better part of a century. Over the years, the crowns were subdivided with plans for new homes to be built. However, the mansion itself has managed to survive. What did you think about Knoll? Did you like the grounds or the house better? Let me know down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.